Welcome to Mobile Armor Radio, the podcast for all things Mecha. Jump ship incoming. All right, all right, all right. Welcome to episode seven of Mobile Armor Radio. I am Chopper, and with me today is Brian. And, and I'm Rob. <laughs> out of, out of order. <laughs> no, it's the right order. It's alphabetical order. It's alphabetical. Is, is that how we did it? Yep. Yeah. Oh, I thought we were for, doing it in for order. seven episodes now. <laughs> I thought we were doing it in the order of who hosts. Oh God, I don't. So. I don't know who's who's next. Is it me? Would be yes, no. it would be Rob. Chaos. It's all chaos over here in the jump ship. So, yeah. uh, episode seven. I think I alluded to episode seven. Yes. Uh, January. Hope everyone had a great Christmas, seeing as it hasn't really happened yet. But I'm being proactive. Yep. We're on our way to it. <laughs> for you, uh, Christmas hasn't happened yet. But for the people listening, it has. So it's, it's that's magic. correct. So I hope everyone got the uh, great Mecca. As well as other stuff. Uh, are you yeah. guys expecting anything great? Or did uh, you guys get anything great? In, in, in a guess mode? I, I won't be getting anything, I don't think. That's not... Uh, <laughs> I, di- I only buy myself, Mecca. Nobody else does. Okay. Uh, no one gets you the, the, the... No one gets you the stuff, not even Fabian? Well, <laughs> he, he hooks me up, that's for sure. But he's my dealer. Right. Yeah, I I I predict uh, I I will be getting things, but I don't know if it'll be mech related. In that uh, I I we just had a delivery at my local uh, shop where I get all my miniature stuff, such as the Star Saga character generator and and all that fun stuff. So I just I just got myself a bunch of holiday gifts. <laughs> Nice. Yeah, that's my problem. That's I buy awesome. myself too many gifts. I, I, nobody else has a chance. Yeah, I get that. Well, you know, <laughs> gotta get, beat him uh, to it. Yeah, I get I get put on a no buy zone between November and December. Yeah, I'm not allowed to buy anything. <laughs> Do you expect anything, Pat? Uh, I don't think I'm getting any mechs. I did ask for some, uh, but uh, I don't think so because I the they were low on my list of of wishes. Yeah. Something you'd rather buy yourself. Yeah, exactly. I, I will say I did uh, did splurge a little bit and ordered that uh, that giant Blu-ray collection of Pat Labor. And oh, yeah. I am yeah. I am looking forward to when that thing arrives. Nice. Such I did, a cool Mac. I will say I did buy my brother-in-law a uh, a Optimus Prime in attack mode. Oh, nice! Uh, model from Gundam Planet. Yeah, well, we'll talk about that later, but uh, I, I have you to blame for certain purchases I may have made. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so uh, let's uh, on that note, then let's uh, move on to the dropship. Dropship landing. And welcome to the dropship. So this is where we talk about what we're working on. Uh, so let's go ahead and start with you, Rob. I hear you have something, some blame to cast my way. Yeah, I guess I'll start with that. Uh, yeah, you you were like, hey, I got to find some transformers for my uh, what is it? Your your brother in law? What is it? Yeah, my my brother in law. Yeah. So we're looking at transformers. So yeah, suddenly I, I end up with uh, two different versions of Jetfire. Oh, Jetfire is so good though. Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. So there's like a 40th anniversary one, which is like the classic Jetfire, and he's huge. But I actually like the uh, newer version. He transforms a lot cooler. But both pictures of them are on the Mobile Armor Radio Facebook page. But uh, yes, Jetfire is my new obsession right now. Now, Jetfire was in the la- in the third Transform movie, yes. Uh, second one, I think. And he turned to be turned out to he, be a Decepticon. Yeah, he was the SR seventy one Blackbird or something like that. What are you oh, guys that, talking that, about? This is you guys are talking about Michael Bay. That is ridiculous. Wow, no, that is not Jetfire. Jetfire is uh, originally looked like he was. The problem with him is that he originally looked just like a Macross Veritech yeah. or a Valkyrie. Yeah. So he, uh, they couldn't actually sell him in Japan, so they had to do a, di- a different version for the cartoon. So I have the cartoon version and the original version. Well, yeah, the- I remember the cartoon version being very big. 
Yes, yeah, that was the whole mm. point. He was like an ancient Autobot or something, and they, since he was a plane, the Decepticons thought he could uh, be on their side, but he's like, no, I'm a good guy. <laughs> yeah. but, but I, I don't like killing people. Pretty much. Uh, and uh, he, uh, they had to make him big in the cartoon because that the, yeah, the toy was the wrong scale. It was like a totally different scale from the rest of the Transformer toys, so they had to make him. Cause mm-hmm. they, they just took, like they always did, was just a Japanese toy and turned it into a Transformer. <laughs> so it's cool. You know. Oh, America is. So that's the one thing. I bought two of those, and I've been looking at a lot, a lot of other Transformers. Uh, there's a lot of cool knockoffs, actually. You get, like, I like them just for the look, not to collect them, so I might look at getting some of the knockoff ones, because they're a lot cheaper. Yeah. For, for some of the classic guys. Well, I'm curious to see how this Optimus Prime model turns out. I might think about picking up myself. And, uh, yeah, and then I also got the Gundam loot this month was, uh, uh, Pat's favorite thing was a little bear that has a sign that says, I'm a Gundam. <laughs> no, he's not. <laughs> he's, little bear guy. Yeah, he's, he's not actually on the same, that, that uh, puzzle base is the same as the uh, ball guys, too. So it must be some kind of line, a more kitty line. Mm. It's from uh, Build Fighters or something? What are these things from, anyways? I'm thinking they're the Build Fighter line. Uh, they might be the, the, like, Build Fighters Try had a lot more mm. bear guy stuff in it. But it also came with a uh, uh, XM, which is the uh, newer version, pretty much, of the uh, 79. So, he was cool. I, and, I know it also came with a weapon kit, so I gave him a sniper rifle. He's, uh, he's <laughs> on my shelf in sniper mode right now. But uh, I think he needs bagpipes. Yes, you want to... Uh, John Jack wanted to give him a, a bass guitar, because the way he's holding his uh, sniper rifle looks like he's a guitar. But Pat said he should have bagpipes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> or both. Or both. So yeah, I need to find a scale, uh, scale, uh, different instruments. <laughs> so that's the uh, things I've been working on, pretty much. What are you guys working on, Brian? Uh, Brian. Um, unfortunately, once again, I I'm very low on the uh, project list. Uh, with with the Thanksgiving holiday followed quickly by the Christmas holiday uh, season. Uh, means I'm traveling a lot more, and I don't bring my paint stuff with me, <laughs> and uh, and so haven't haven't gotten as much done on on that front. Uh, still still scrambling to to make some more mechs for uh, for for the mech battle at Adepticon. <laughs> I, I know we're we're all kind of starting to prep for that like crazy, even though it's a couple months away. It's like eh, it's gonna be here fast enough. Um, yeah, I forgot to mention I, that. I've been building tons of those mechs, too. <laughs> yeah. I will say on on uh, a plus side of that, I did finally invest in getting, a, like, an actual carrying case. Uh, it's the, whatever the heck they're called, the, they're, they, like, have the military logo on them. They're, like, a like an official carrying case for miniatures. They mm. have the foam pullouts and stuff. Oh, battle, battle foam? Yeah. And, uh... And I got a, a little mobile armor radio card slipped in there, <laughs> but uh, <laughs> I, I've I've now got a case that actually I, I've uh, got it set up for space for all of my little striders for Dead Zone, mm. so uh, I can bring all the the goof custom one that I made and and my uh, Easy Eight one. Uh, nice. So I'm I'm pretty I'm pretty stoked that I can now bring those to places without having to worry about them destroying themselves. <laughs> yeah, getting all this stuff to Depticon is going to be interesting. I think I'm going to have to use all the bubble wrap I have to uh, try to make sure these mechs make it. Luckily, I don't have to take them back. <laughs> Pat's going to take possession of them once we get there, but uh, I don't have to. I only have to transport them one way. But it'll, yep. I'll have to be bringing a lot of crazy glue with me just to be sure to glue it all back together when I know it's going to get destroyed in transport. <laughs> yeah, crazy glue and tack. <laughs> yeah. What have you been working on, Pat? <laughs> Uh, me, not too much, honestly. I've been working on a lot of terrain for Adepticon. Mm. Cause that's my job now. <laughs> Just yeah. building stuff. Cause if this, you don't do it, we have to when we get there. <laughs> for this event. And, uh, but in between, I've been working on other, other projects, but in between the other projects is, uh, I'm waiting for something to dry. I've been working on my cab models again. Uh, mm-hmm. Falling back into my racks, and uh, and been painting on them uh, in between. So you know, I've been 
when those need to dry, then I bring back the other project. <laughs> I feel like that's the only way I'm going to get things done if I kind of rotate my products as my projects, not my products. <laughs> my projects as they oh. start to as they start to uh, as they're drying and stuff. So, and then once I get all this Vanguard factions finished painting, then uh, I'm going to finally because uh, I finished painting up the Mospita on the frames. Nice. Uh, then I'll start assembling it. Yeah, I painted mine on the frame too for, for some reason on that one. I think it was just easier for those models. They're they're very uh, crazy. Yeah, and then, you know, I'll clip them and then I'll just uh, touch up the parts that I clip. Yeah, that's what I did too. <laughs> so. Mm-hmm. Uh, but again, not too much because of uh, just other... other uh, Responsibilities. Yes, that's a good word for it. Responsibility. <laughs> Yeah, especially on Christmas, it's it's hard to get to any kind of hobbying, and hell, it was hard yeah. to get these recordings in, all the podcasts. Yeah. <laughs> it's true. It's hard to slip it in there, but we're we're coming through. It's going to be January 1st. It's New Year, people. It's 2019. Woohoo! The then... distant future of 2019. Next year is, after 2019, is Cyberpunk, so we're, we're all true. We're yeah. ready. We're, we're supposed to... St- Start dressing like Blade Runner soon. I better, right? I better get my uh, data jack. That's right. <laughs> cool. Anybody so, else got right. anything they're working on? Anything else? Nope. nope. <laughs> <laughs> let's uh, let's move on to Comstar then. Message from Comstar. Comstar. All right, uh, Brian. Uh, yes. What you got going on in the Comstar section here? Um. Well, I. Uh, I recently went to a, an anime convention called Daishokan um, last uh, last couple months in November, um, and had a had an absolute blast there. Um, one thing I did pick up while I was there was uh, this old Shiro Masamune series, uh, like one off called uh, Gun Dress. Uh, it uh, have you guys seen that one? No. It, it's. It has that old, like, 80s, 90s, uh, like, cyberpunk mecha vibe to it. Gun uh, Dress? The, gun Dress, yeah. Uh, it, so it's from the guy that made Ghost in the Shell. Um, the, the, more the, the comic, you know, the manga, not necessarily the, the movies. Um, but, uh, it was interesting. They, they had, uh, they had, like, the, the, uh, that style of mech where, uh, like in Appleseed, where it's uh, like the landmates have, where they got, you know, the robot arms are out in the front, but then you got the little, the, the pilot's arms are actually sticking out of the torso. Um, so they, they had a lot of like crazy uh, mech designs. Not the greatest uh, show itself, uh, unfortunately. <laughs> it, it was kind of... Some of these mechs are kind of invid looking. Yeah. Yeah, it it was it had a kind of an experimental feel to it. Oh, uh, I see what you're saying. It's like an open cockpit. Yeah, yeah. But uh it, it was it was interesting. It, it was kind of sparking that vibe that uh that I'd been into for a while of, of that real kind of classical uh mecha shows and and stuff like that, like the Pat Labors and the Dominion Tank Police and stuff like that. So uh, that was that was a fun one. Uh, I'm trying to think other oh, things going on. Like I said, it's it's been kind of a busy time. Um, but I I will say like uh, I've I've been hearing good things about the Bumblebee movie uh, mm-hmm. from from the the folks that have seen it that uh, that I'm friends with. Now that's uh, supposed to be a prequel, right? I believe so. Uh, I think it takes place in the 80s. Uh, which like I only the, just found out. Like the original. Yeah. So it's it's like Bumblebee before before the Michael Bay movie show up, I guess. Um, so I, I'm I don't know if I'll catch it in theaters just because I I don't know if I'll have time to. But uh, I'm I'm glad to hear that it it seems to be doing all right and people are liking it. Um, so that's that's always fun. Uh. Man, I can't think of of other things that I've got going down apart from I've got a I put together another bookshelf so I could put all my Gundam the Origin comics together. Nice. 
uh yeah that was that was exciting um yeah it's it's been a a slow month i guess uh, how about you rob yeah, watching stuff. I don't know if I've actually seen it, watched any shows. I'm trying to think. I don't think so. I've been uh falling behind in all that stuff. I've been so busy mm. doing other things. But uh still reading all the uh, BattleTech books. I'm in the uh Jade Falcon books. I'm on the third one. And uh you're supposed to like these guys, I guess, but uh man. <laughs> <laughs> you're supposed to like the Jade Falcons? Yeah, it's from their point of view, but Oh. So far, it's, uh, yeah, it's a bit of a slog, these books. They're not as good as the, uh, other ones. And, uh, other than that, what have I done? I think that's about it. Like, I've, I've just been, yeah, working away on MechZone for, uh, Adepticon. Everybody come to Adepticon. Come play MechZone. Yes. Fill up the days. It's on Friday and Saturday on the, what is it, 23rd? I think it is, of March? Yeah. Yeah. The Friday is the 23rd, I think, because I think it starts the 22nd. Uh, 22nd is yeah, Friday, the 23rd is Saturday. Oh. Okay. Yeah, because it's Thursday through Sunday, pretty much. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, so Friday and Saturday, we're doing Mech Zone. Come play if you're in the Chicago area at the time. You can uh, sign up for uh, Adepticon. It's, it's pretty reasonable. Go to adepticon.org, I believe it is. And it's in the yes. event listings. Plus, uh, these guys are running while well, Pat's running the booth for Mantic, and I'm sure Brian will be all over the place having to run games. <laughs> oh yeah, I got uh, Vanguard's the one I'm going to be working on. <laughs> Not very mechy in Vanguard though. Well, I, I if I well that's that's one thing I actually picked up today. I was at my um, my used DVD place, uh, Disc Traders, and uh, I found uh, kind of I. Ironically, uh, the special edition copy of, uh, the Escaflone movie. So it's like a two disc special edition with a, like, hardcover book looking thing. Nice. And, uh, got that for $10. Wow. <laughs> oh, nice. So I, I, I would like to bring, um, bring my fantasy mech if I can get it done in time, uh, to, to Adepticon, even just to, to show it off. Um, well, yeah. Van- Vanguard does have those giant rules, so you can might use yes. them to be able to use them as the giant. <laughs> I just don't know if it's tall enough. That thing is so oh, huge. Yeah. That's a good thing about Vanguard. It, it's not a uh, real line of sight like Dead Zone, so you can. Uh, it doesn't really matter how scale they are, mm. as long as the base is the right size, right? Something like that. Uh, well, I was just gonna thought of something. Jeez, now it went. You started talking about I'm, that. I'm sorry. <laughs> It's all my fault. It'll come back you were to talk- me. You were talking about Adepticon and how we shall go there. But it was something else that came up, and I was like, oh, yeah, I did that. I can't remember what it was now. Oh, well. Oh, yeah, I know what it is. I'm playing Battletech again. I got a new computer, mm. and I'm playing the uh, Harebrain Schemes Battletech, and I got the Flashpoint. So mm. I've been doing that a lot, a very lot, because I missed it. I hadn't played for a couple months when my computer was, uh, my gaming computer died. It was down. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, it's fun. It's uh, There's a career mode that you play now, and it's... Uh, it's all right. It's I, I kind of like the uh, the narrative mode a bit more, but you can't play with the new max in the narrative mode yet. And they have some, I guess they have a glitch where you can't if you have flashpoint, you can't play someone who doesn't have flashpoint in uh, one off matches and stuff like this. So there's a bit of glitchy going on, but I'm hopefully they'll get that sorted out in the new mm-hmm. year. Yep. The distant future. In the future of 2019. Uh, you also pointed, uh, posted something about a video game I, on, uh, Mobile Armor Radio just the other day, didn't you, Brian? Uh, the, the Kerbal, uh, uh the Kerbal Space, space program. program? Yeah, what's that? So the, the Kerbal Space Program, uh, was a game, I'm trying to remember how long ago that came out. It's, it's been a while. It's been I've over had, like, it's like six years or something. I've had, yeah, I've had that game for a while. Um, ba- basically it, it, uh, was like you could, it's like the NASA program, but it's like these weird kind of minion aliens, and then you build rockets, and you have certain achievements you have to 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 meet when you build each rocket. Like you got to reach a certain altitude, or then you gotta, and eventually you get out out of Earth's orbit into space. So, so like you're building the rocket. And so you have to give it like engines and thrusters and fuel. Yeah, it's, and... it's very. It, there's a very high learning curve for it. It's one of the things uh, when I first got, it, I was like, "This is ridiculously complicated." 
Because it's all like legit math, if I recall correctly. Yeah, it's legit physics involved in this thing too. And and so uh, I guess they've got an upgrade coming out. Uh, I'm going to see if I can bring up the article quick while we're talking. Uh, but they're they're going to do um, the the uh, Mac cross transforming fighters. They're they're non specific. It looks the trailer shows uh, what it looks like to be a YF19. Uh, which would be from, yep, YF-19 and YF-21, uh, which would be the Macross Plus uh, series that I mentioned last time. And so, should be fun. Uh, they're, they're, they're crazy cool suits. And I have no idea how, how well that science is actually going to come into play. <laughs> when it's like, okay, well, your legs pop down and those thrusters are still pushing that same amount of force. Yeah. Like, I've only been able to get out into space a couple times, but then everyone dies because they can't get them to re-enter Earth without burning up. <laughs> <laughs> so that's the, that's the last time I played that game, when, so, after my fifth attempt at killing astronauts. Pat, you're the Russian space program, then. <laughs> Pretty much, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Eventually you'll get it. Throw enough people only, up there. I was only worried about getting out into space. I wasn't worried about getting her home yet. Yeah, no, nah, that's that's secondary. Okay, the, this is not... I'm uh, just... Kind of bringing up the article again. This is not an official update. It it is a set of mods, uh, but it must be mods that are now like complete, uh, which is pretty cool. Like mo- the modding community is is always uh, amazing. What what dedicated fans will put together? Yeah, even for uh, uh, BattleTech, they have a bunch of mods. I forget what it's called, but you can do some pretty crazy stuff. So. Whatever a game comes out, you know, there's going to be a whole group of guys beating it down and doing what they mm-hmm. want with it, so it's, it's fun. Yeah. What, what is, is that? What is that? <laughs> oh, is the fan spin up on my computer? Is that what you picked up? <laughs> yeah, very I, loud. Did you, did you just take off? <laughs> it sounded like you just, just blasted into space. I just launched... <laughs> My my rocket! You guys caught me. I'm actually playing the game right now. Are you trying to dissipate heat in your back? What's going on? <laughs> my computer's running hot. That was funny. It sounds like it. it. Sounds like you got like an industrial fan cooling. <laughs> oh yeah, it's it's got a big vent out the back. <laughs> nice. So Jeez. I got I got a cooling platform underneath it. I just turned that fan on. So hopefully it'll even it out. Is it terribly loud? I can. It's very. It's very loud. <laughs> Sorry, is that better? Yes, that's better. Uh, that's, that's much better. Now it sounds like you just there's a helicopter outside your window. <laughs> <laughs> the other one was like me and me and Pat were both like, "What the hell just happened?" <laughs> uh, Are you being attacked by drones? What's going on? That'd be that would be really interesting. This no, is all... it's just a very loud fan. I apologize, everyone. Yeah, this is all staying in because that's hilarious. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's gonna take it a while to cool back down anyway. So nice. Mm-hmm. So yeah, any other news? I don't know if there's anything else. Oh, I know uh, the BattleTech uh, tabletop is going to finally ship the starter sets in January. They finally got China. Finally started sending them the product, which is nice. <laughs> nice. So all the pre-orders are going to be out by January, supposedly. So that's good news. I can't Sounds... wait. I really want to get that um, that that uh, Robotech. Uh... Those Robotech games are going to be coming out pretty soon too, aren't they? Yeah, I think or are they're... they out already? Uh, some of them are. The card games, I think, are. But the one we were looking at, the attack on SDF-1, I think pre-orders yeah. are out for that one. Oh, okay. oh yeah, 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 yeah. That might ah, be a that... Gen Con next year uh, purchase. That might be I think so, too. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. I, I'm, I'm really happy that the, that those are happening. It, it seemed like the Robotech franchise itself, like, I've it really kind of soured for me with, with everything that Harmony Gold was doing um, and, and just all, all that stuff and... It's, it seemed like there was never really a lot of fresh, like, new things that they were trying to get new people interested in the series. So, like, these new, like, uh, different types of games and everything that are coming out, it feels like a real breath of fresh air. Well, I don't want to, I don't, I don't, I don't, I'm like you, I've been burned too many times, so I don't want to get my hopes up too high. That's, but, that's fair. But at least they're trying. Said, yeah. We've looked, yeah. I did get a chance to look at the game at Gen Con last year, and I was, uh, I was hopeful. Well, it's, hmm. it seems like uh, since Palladium lost the license, Harmony Gold's been able to go for other, a bunch of other people. There's a Hong Kong company called uh, 
Fun Kids, I think it's called, who's going to be doing mm. a new game. They just released uh, more uh, shots of those uh, miniatures coming for that game. And who knows when that's coming out, but at least there's some other things happening with it now. Not just Palladium has it wrapped up, I and mean, they're doing yeah. all the role-playing games and the miniature game and doing it poorly. So at least, it, Harmony Gold might be horrible still, but at least they're uh, giving it to a bunch of other people now. So Yeah. We can only hope. Fingers crossed. Yep. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. All right. Cool. Well, I, I think that, uh, man, I'm trying to think there is, oh, um, uh, Battle Angel Alita is going to be coming out in February. So just a short month away from uh, when this podcast will be out. Uh, are you guys familiar with that series? Yep. I uh, watched the original movies. Yeah. But now the live action with James Cameron producing, and I, I guess uh, everybody was freaked out by the trailer with the big eyes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and uh, he didn't reduce the size of the eyes, but he increased the size of the pupils. So now it, it's, it looks a lot better. If you see, there's a comparison out there. Mm. And okay. It's not. It, it doesn't creep you out when looking at her. And now it looks like oh, it's just <laughs> it's interesting. She looks not just scary because yeah. yeah, she she was pretty scary there, and with so, her long arms and stuff. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And, Excited about that, and they all, uh, not quite, uh, mech news, but, uh, they just announced the, uh, people behind the Blade Runner anime coming out. It's, it's, mm. uh, gonna be taking place in the Blade Runner universe with established characters, 13 episodes, and the director is, uh, the director from, uh, Ghost in the Shell Standalone Complex, and, uh, creative producer is, uh, Cowboy Bebop's creative producer, the director oh, of Cowboy nice. Bebop, so. It's yeah, got yeah. some legit, uh, anime backing behind this Blade Runner anime, so that might be, that might be awesome. It's not just some cheap, you know, cash in. This is a legit thing. So hopefully, same with Pacific Rim when that comes out, it's the same idea. Yeah, it's all being done by Netflix. <laughs> I, nice. I think I heard rumors of a, another Ghost in the Shell standalone complex uh, series coming. There's whispers of it. Yeah, uh, I don't. I don't know if that was going to be a Netflix one too. Uh, yeah, maybe. But I do love Ghost in the Shell. And oh, yeah. the TV show is good, but the movies were, or the first movie especially was really good. But uh, mm. yep, more more of those kind of animes. And there's definitely Max and Ghost in the Shell, so we can talk about. Oh that. yeah, <laughs> yeah. There's some really cool ones in there. Tachikomas and the. Yep. <laughs> so there you go. I think that might yeah. cover everything that we're thinking of. If anybody else has anything, let us know, and we'll talk about it next episode. Throw it in the uh, Facebook group. Yeah. The only other thing I can think of is uh, I just rewatched the last two seasons of uh, Legend of Korra and all the the mechs that are in the the last yeah. uh, season of that. That's right. Yeah. The big, that the giant big one. one. Yeah. Yeah. That, I watched, that was uh, so cool. I watched the other day off Netflix of uh, the MS3000 uh, Atlantic Rim. Oh, you did watch that? <laughs> <laughs> I nearly peed my pants. Yes. Yeah. Well, I've been watching that that. Uh, that uh, Brandon Tennell done. He, he did the gun gun frame. No, what's a gun? What's it? the movie you suggested, uh, Pat? Oh, Gunhead. Gunhead. Gun yeah, gun he head. did that yeah, Gunhead yeah. review, but he's done tons of reviews. So I watched all his Godzilla ones, and his. Uh, <laughs> it's, it's pretty funny. He's a funny guy. Yeah. So. Very entertaining. Yeah. So there you go. All right. Anything else for uh, Comstar? No, I don't think so. Yeah. We're all set there. All right, well, let's move on to the Mech Bay. Now entering the Mech Bay Hangar. All right, welcome to the Mech Bay Hangar. Today we're going to discuss uh, with mechs, uh, piloting mechs. Uh, do we prefer single pilots, multi pilots, and discuss uh, the decline of the combining mech? <laughs> To clean. Mm. I mean, right? I mean, you don't see... I mean, for a while, like, yeah. you see a lot of combined mechs. You know, Rangers, of course, were the big ones. You're right. And now you just don't see them anymore. Yeah, like the, the Power Rangers, Voltron. Uh, trying to think there's a couple of other shows that had some combining... Zoids had some... Zoids, Very, yeah. very little uh, combined... You don't even see... You don't even see... I mean... Uh, Devastator was only just had a bit part in the Transformer movies. Yeah. What are these Transformer movies you speak of? No, you know. They're yeah. these mech they're these mech movies that 
I, I think he might be in Bumblebee, actually. That's some. <laughs> that, do you think Devastator's in Bumblebee? I think so. I think I, know, I heard uh, rumors. I know that the original Gunbuster series had a, a two ship combiner uh, one for for the Gunbuster mech itself. But uh, yeah, you're you're right that it really has been something that's uh, declined over time. Uh, I. I I, I kind of wonder if that was just a shift in market because I imagine you know those first ones would be great for selling toys. <laughs> yes, and uh, I think that's probably what where the whole combining mech or multiple pilot thing because mm-hmm. you know I could never understand. Got to collect them all. How five people can pilot one big giant thing? <laughs> what are you, what are your responsibilities in that? Well, especially in that. Carefully. Yeah, the, the new Voltron, they kind of go into that where they're like, oh, you got to swing, swing this. And they're like, when they're first trying to operate it, it's like, whoa, yeah. I never really thought about that before, that they're all separate. Because you think, yeah. well, maybe just the, the head one controls them once they all combine. The other guys are just then, sitting there. <laughs> or they were in charge of the weapon system. Yeah. That's yeah. how I always thought about it. Yeah. That because makes a little more Voltron, sense. Yeah. And I was like, how did, how, how is this, you know, I mean, you really have to, so then I, I guess this bleeds into then the multiple shared mind of Pacific Rim. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that that makes more sense, though, at least, because it isn't, oh, you're running the left arm, I'm running the right arm, because you'd never work. Like, have you ever been in one of those, like, three-legged races? It doesn't work. <laughs> <laughs> or, or played Octodad. It's like, all right, you're this limb, you're that limb, you're that limb. Yeah, no, it's, uh, yeah, so it makes sense that they had to combine their brain, too, so that they work together. Mm-hmm. But, yeah. Which, but, which kind of lends itself well to, like, the super robot. So, so, uh, uh Gurren Lagan. I can't believe we've kind of forgot about that one. That, that's, that one's all about combining, uh, where, where you've got the little, um, what, what the heck do they call the, uh, Lagan? Yeah, it, it had a specific name. Uh, the little head robot that Simone would run around with. That could oh. merge with any other uh, mech that they came across. Basically, um, I know. I know in, in Transformers in the comics that that's kind of had a resurgence. They did like the uh, what the heck were they called? My my buddy Nick was telling me about them. It's like Headmasters. I think they're yeah, called. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, I remember that toy line too. There's Headmaster little guys. I think my nephew has some of those that they yeah. go and they, your transformer head flips up and you can stuff these guys inside of it. It's like a little <laughs> brain case. <laughs> yeah, I I, I do kind of like the that idea. Like it, it reminds me a bit of that kind of a classical like World War Two esque. You know, you have your pilot who's who's controlling the thing, and then you've got your bombardier or mm-hmm. you know a co-pilot, somebody that's that's next to you managing another part of the the beast, as it were. Um, yeah, I like the idea of operating weapon systems. That reminds me of being in a ship or, you know, mm-hmm. like a spaceship or something. Yeah. Or more, I mean, or more like a tank. Or a tank, yeah. yeah. Well, that would, that, would make, that would make sense to me because I just, mm-hmm. you know, if we're talking Voltron, then you get the you get the 15 vehicle Voltron. Who's doing yeah, who's that's, what? That's my only favorite <laughs> who's Voltron. Who's on first? <laughs> I haven't and watched, don't get wrong, yeah. it's like one of my favorite Voltrons too, but who is, who's in charge of that thing is my question. <laughs> it's, uh, what was the name of the it's original show? I gotta watch the original show, maybe they explain it. It's Armored Fleet Deruger XV. I wonder if they have an English, uh, dub of that, because I'd love to get that to see, see if they ex- actually explain how, yeah, how this thing works, but I love that. That was my favorite Voltron. It, unfortunately, it was only like we ever got one season of it compared to all the, uh, the, the Lion Voltrons, but, but well, you know, because that was the most popular, and then well, that's the other one I mean, failed so badly they never made the third one. So, <laughs> well, I don't feel like that ship one failed badly, did it? Yeah, that's what they said that it, it's it, in North America it just didn't do well, so it's uh, everybody liked oh, the Lions did, too much. It, it did it did all right in Japan because, but the first two were popular from what I read in Japan, uh, but the the third one didn't even make it. The yeah, one with the th- robots. Yeah, it's, it was a what was that one called? It was um. That was another anime. Lightspeed Electroid Elbigas. The Gladiatorial Voltron. They made the toys, yeah. but they never made the, uh, the show. The cartoon. That's yeah, because, it, unfortunately, the car one, yeah, it just didn't, it, the lion one was so iconic, I think it, it ruined it for the other ones. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, Voltron is one of those 
I, I understand, okay, five people coming together, maybe they could work everything out, but yeah, 15 people come together, they're definitely yeah. not working parts of, like, okay, you are, you operate that toe, and yeah. you, uh... Bend at the knee, bend at the knee. <laughs> yeah. <it's> yeah. Right. <laughs> Those it, like in uh, in a Robotech Macross setting, you could you could dedicate like a dozen people to just be launching missiles at at people. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> that's true. I know that that uh, the the bridge of that ship had a whole bunch of people doing stuff. That's that's true. When it turned into the giant, uh, yeah, the Robotech one, the, S- yeah. the SDF one. Yeah, yeah. So I guess the uh, with yeah, the multi-pilot. It, so I guess. Um, why did it change from uh, being? Or why popular? did it change? Or I guess what? My, I want. I was just curious what everyone else's preference is. Single pilot, multi pilot, combining mech pilots. Well, I guess the easy answer is whatever. It's good story, but I really do like the single pilots. I think it's. I don't know. Maybe because I grew up on Robotech, that it, they are always like the jet fighters. I guess mm-hmm. even jet fighters though. Look at Top even, Gun. Yeah. There's, there's two guys in a jet fighter. <laughs> Well, a yeah. couple of those Veritex had double seats. Yeah. yeah, but they never really... It was always this one guy in there, really. That was the strange thing about that. They're based on, on the, what was it, the Tomcat or whatever, but they don't actually yep. operate in that way. <laughs> <laughs> the F-14, yeah. They, yeah. they don't have the Bombardier uh, so, or Navigator. But uh, I, I I really I can really go either way. It, it, a big part, obviously, is, is execution. Yeah. But... Um, uh, like, I do kind of like the a lot of times when there are two pilots or two or more. Like, there's a lot more kind of internal communication and 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 dialogue, and it leads to to um, more. I don't know if I'd say logical, but less like having someone having to like monologue their thought process of like real, realizing something. <laughs> Uh, it does kind of lend itself to that. Um, so it's like, oh yeah, you gave me this idea. I can I can kick with my leg. I can <laughs> wait. We've got a sword on this thing, mm-hmm. Mako. Yeah. My my guess in, in the Pacific Rim scenario, uh, I, I'm thinking that uh, he knew that the sword was there. He was just like, it's gonna be a really bad idea to plummet to the earth from this high. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but. Uh, yeah. yeah, I can really go either way. I I like I like a lot of them. Uh, I I'll throw one out there because because obviously with with multi pilot ones like some some fun uh, scenarios are like like the Gunbuster um, suit which which had uh, two pilots uh, that were were um, you know big big draw there was that both pilots were then kind of light years away from. Uh, civilization and we're kind of getting stuck in time um i'll throw one odd one out there i don't know if anyone in our audience has seen it there's a show called aquarion where it it was mechs that like could could join and combine to to form one big one and that one was weird uh (laughs) i've only seen a couple episodes of that uh let's just say the joining was was interesting uh we we have we have the darling in the Franks. Which was well, that's I was just going to go there. You yeah, get the yeah. multi-pilot. You get there's several ways to go with the multi-pilot, and then you got yeah. that very disturbing darling in the Franks. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you do. Oh <laughs> uh, yeah, I was, leave it to Brian to bring the disturbing stuff to the show. Yeah, yeah, I guess so. <laughs> <laughs> I watch a lot of anime, and a lot of it does weird stuff. Those Japanese. Oh. Yeah. The funny thing is, back in the day when I was playing, like, MechWarrior, the original video game, I was in high school, and it was on, like, Commodore 64 or whatever it was on, but one of us would, you know, we're young kids, one of us would operate the the controls to move, and the other one would shoot, mm. so we're, we were pretty much a two-person two uh, mech right there, and that w- yeah. worked a lot better. It's it's funny how that in actual <laughs> yeah, mech I combat, imagine. they don't do that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Well, that, that that that's where it kind of really lends itself to that tank scenario. You know, you yeah. watch watch a movie like Fury, and you'll see, you know, that one's very specifically a tank movie. Uh, but they're like everyone's got a job inside that thing. There's like a four or five man crew. One guy's driving, one guy's loading, one guy's aiming, one guy's you know firing. <laughs> like yeah. 
Well, that's all sans, I guess, if you want to, if we're going to go this route. Uh, we're also talking about vehicles that don't have quite what you want to call a neural net. Yeah, this is you're connected mm-hmm. to the, in Battletech, you still have that, the, uh, what do they call that? The headpiece that lets you control equilibrium and stuff like that, and you're connected yeah. more. And in, gotcha. yeah, in, especially Pacific Rim, you're, you are part of the robot. It becomes <laughs> one with you. Yeah. So it makes more sense that, that, I think they do that because they realize, hey, you really couldn't operate a, a, a mech in that, in, in, in a fun way. It'd be more like a front end loader where you have to, yeah, sure, you got foot pedals and you got, you know, different ways you can move the controllers, but you're not doing anything too exciting because it's a lot to do at once. But if you, yeah, the moment I mean, you give that power if we, to. If we, if we then compare that to mo- what we have modern day, I mean, let's talk about the Apache gunship then. Hmm. Even with the, the the automation with the Apache gunship and how they could yeah the when they look pilot guns could control and... yeah control the gun with just the turn of his head yeah <laughs> you know I mean that's still it's still a two pilot it's still a two man vehicle yeah they're they're getting yeah. better with their Waldo stuff where it's, they hook it to your legs and your so your emotions just get amplified but they're doing it on that on smaller scale for like loaders and stuff almost like aliens but. I can, if there was a reason to do it into bigger mechs, you probably could, but the suspension of disbelief of the whole thing is that mechs aren't that useful in actual combat. <laughs> <laughs> a tank can do pretty much the same thing a mech can do, but actually it's a lot cheaper and it, you know. <laughs> you know yeah. But, oh, cheaper's never stopped us before. <laughs> that's right. We just need some, like, really crazy dictator in the world just to start building mechs and then be like, yeah, well, come get me. And, Everybody well, else, I have to Japan build one. <laughs> how many is Japan at already? As far as those Gundam statues? Yeah, but they're they're just statues, and they they have limited control. But there's no That's actual what weaponry they want on us them. To think. <laughs> maybe, maybe it's a, it's a secret <laughs> stockpile. Yeah, I mean, if we're, I think the weapon weapon system for a, a giant mech has to come before the actual mech itself. Yeah, you build the mech around the system. Yeah, 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 but. Uh, yeah, combiners. I, I always liked the uh, Devastator. He, when I was uh, as a kid collecting uh, Transformers or playing with them, I wasn't even collecting back then because I destroyed them all. Obviously, I didn't collect them. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, Devastator was the only one, really, I think that was around, and he was awesome. But I always yeah. remember that when you put him together, he was so loose that he uh, yeah. he, he really he never held. To- yeah, he never really held together much. That was actually mm-hmm. speaking of holding together. That was a neat thing about that uh, vehicle Voltron. Was that you? Could, they could only stay together for five minutes because that's all the in, the energy they had. That was a neat little uh, thing they had in that show. Forced them huh. to not always be in robot form. Because you know there was an actual cartoon called the Combiner Wars, Transformers Combiner Wars. No, I did not. That's I'm sure. It's is it just all of them combined into giant robots? I think it's all the combining type robots in a war. It's it's just like hey I combiner hear you, I hear you like combining your robots together let's just make Optimus Prime be able to combine and let's duke it out <laughs> it's a, once again that's a way to sell more toys right there <laughs> oh yeah when did this come out this came out oh 2016 so just oh, it's new. oh it's new yeah. so they're, they're your whole theory about combining not uh, happening maybe it's a resurgence Voltron's well, I mean, popular on Netflix and now we get Combiner Wars from Transformers maybe it's coming back. Say, I gotta say, did we anyone hear about it though? I didn't hear about it. Well, it's probably not like... focused on us. <laughs> I, I'm trying to remember. Is that is that more geared towards? A, is that a kid show? It doesn't look like it. Well, no, they okay. are kid shows. Well, Combiner Wars does. Oh, well, we had like Beast Wars, I suppose. <laughs> it's like it doesn't really sound like a good kid show, but what, ne- what network is Go Ninety? No idea. Maybe it was a Japanese show. Hmm. Oh, hmm. see, it was a video service by Verizon. Oh, uh, so that's streaming. that's so it didn't come. <laughs> that's yeah. why we never heard of it. Yeah, I was right though. It is Optimus Prime, Mirage, Ironhide, and Prowl and Sunstreaker combined to become Autobot, Optimus Maximus. <laughs> no, why yeah. Starscream? No, not Starscream. I said Sun Sunstreaker. Yeah. I don't, there, I've, obviously, there's a bad, bad guys too, but I haven't seen that. It was it a video game or something? Maybe that's what it is. Well, you said it was a streaming service. Oh, on a streaming yeah, service. It was an eight episode streaming. Yeah. That's 
sounds um, about right. Hmm, I might want to check that out. Maybe it's good. Uh, I think they do need a Transformers right now is like that Rescue Rangers or whatever that really kitty one. And if they Rescue did, Bots, yeah, yeah. If they did like a more legit like gauge towards teenager version, like a like uh, Voltron, that I think they could really uh, hook a new market. Right now, yeah, kids like it, but they only like it for a couple of years and then they go away. And you got to get the collectors out there back into it. Yeah, because all the collectors want G one, which is you know that's that's the classic. Uh, up until once again, what is it with uh, old cartoons and movies ruining things? GI Joe gets ruined by Cobra Law, and now uh, <laughs> Transformers <laughs> the movie just kills off all the G ones. Yeah, yeah, I know merchandising. <laughs> I remember I, I was as a kid. You, you, you got to talk to Hasbro about that. I never saw it, but it, somebody told me about it. I was like, I don't want to see that. <laughs> so I never saw it until I was older because <laughs> I, I refused as a child. So I, I was never scarred by it because I was warned. Well, I was, I was older when I watched it, but I was like, in my head, what it wasn't that people were dying. I'm like, all right. So I watched four seasons of Transformers before going to school. <laughs> and people, I watched everyone get shot and no one died. And then in the first five minutes, <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. people just drop like flies. What the hell is going on? <laughs> Suspension of disbelief ruined. <laughs> exactly. Even they even killed Starscream. They're like, come on. They killed everybody. I know. Made them all dead. For you kids. Know, not <laughs> For kids. Prime. Yeah. Jazz. Jazz died. Well, Jazz dies in the t- movies, too. <laughs> Everyone dies. <laughs> of course. The African Transformer dies. Did he die first? Of the Transformers, I think he did. <laughs> oh, it was the in 80s. The movie? Yeah. I think he was... Was he the only one that died in that movie? No, the Trans- so. Transformers? The, the oh, one, the new movie. So you're saying new the movies. Michael Bay movie, yeah. I don't know what those are. second one had a higher body count. Everyone who said Sam's name died. Yeah. <laughs> At least once. <laughs> if you were associated with Shia LaBeouf, you'd want to die too. Yeah. I read an article a while ago about it, and it was titled The Transformers, The Movie, and The Great Toy Massacre of 1986. (laughs) (laughs) That makes sense. So, any other uh, thing we can talk about uh, multiple piloted mechs or combiner mechs? Once again, I think if if mechs were real, they would have multiple pilots. That just makes sense. You think so? Yeah. Yeah, like somebody to control the weapon systems and someone to control the uh, movement. Driving, yeah. yeah. At least a two-player, two-seater. I, I mean, mm-hmm. if we're talking right now, right? Yeah, like with yeah. current technology. Yeah, yeah. But like you say, until two, you get that neural network. Yeah, has, definitely has to be at least two people. And and I really, I, I know it's it might just be because I'm a fan of the the show, but I really think like the Ghost in the Shell future is probably like the closest one we're yeah. moving towards. That's more like drones, almost those guys. Yeah, they what? got well, they got the the. Uh, artificial intelligence ones, but the yeah. actual like hard suit or the the big suit uh, mechs with the again the little arms sticking out yeah, for the the pilot. Uh, I, I there's something about it that, like makes it feel like okay that that's something that I could see us making in the next couple of years. Well, powered armor for uh, military, they're already doing that where it's oh, yeah, assisted yeah. armor, so that's just the natural extension of that. Yeah, especially with the. Uh, all these kids. Edge of tomorrow. Yeah, Edge of Tomorrow. Yeah, that, that's like the new, the closest to it. But, uh, all these, it's like when the kids watch Star Trek, all of a sudden we get things like to tablets and mm-hmm. uh, cell phones cell and phones. stuff. The, the new generation watching Iron Man, they're going to be like, yeah, we could do that. <laughs> yeah, we want hard seats, man. Yeah, exactly. So. Yeah. <laughs> that's, that's, that's when it'd be a single pilot is if it is just a suit. Like it, if it comes to a certain scale, that's when it has to. Although. If it becomes, <laughs> then it's a Mospita. Yeah, like a Mosquito, yeah. <laughs> I could see for sure. Like guys on bikes with suits. That's you get hard suits for bikes now. They're just not. They're just not uh, motor. Like they're not. Uh, don't have uh, motors in them or anything, but they're solid suits. You you can look like Iron Man on a motorcycle if you want to. It's true. <laughs> Whether or not it protects you from like a tank shell, no, that's or just key, yeah. crashing in general. <laughs> We here at Mobile Armored Radio do not guarantee <laughs> the protection right. quality of the Iron Man motorcycle outfit. Yeah, especially when you slide across the pavement, it just melts to you. So yeah, but yeah, times. Uh, like I said, the 
the any kind of mechs nowadays that like the Russians are building some stuff. It's always for like construction and things like that, which makes sense. You you want to hmm. have something bigger to lift things like a crane, but you want it to be more mobile. Kind of makes yeah. sense. Well, well, ironically, like even the power loader in Aliens, yeah, uh, was while it's in the movie, it's a one person outfit in yeah, reality it. <laughs> it was a two person rig yeah that's right there's somebody in, be- in the back doing this yeah the, the stuff yeah keeping it balanced <laughs> that just well that's the thing also when look at all those boston dynamic stuff i don't think there's i think the future is unpiloted stuff like there's not even going to be a person involved it's going to be all ai doing it themselves <laughs> We don't have to worry about it. You see those Boston Dynamic robots open the dogs opening doors now, and it's just like that's the future, and it doesn't. It's pretty damn scary. <laughs> which, which is why I'm just gonna throw out Macross Plus again. Not to say that there's artificial intelligence plays a big role. <laughs> Spoilers. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's, that is the future. I think is that kind of stuff. At least mm. drones, like remote piloted, right? So, yeah. I mean, they haven't done more of that in anime. Is that no pilots, just remote piloted? I guess it's it. You take the, you take the danger away if you don't. If it's just two robots that nobody's inside, I guess. Well, I, like, I, I think uh, some some uh, East Asian philosophy really comes into play too, where like you are embodying the armor. Like it's not just stuff you're wearing, right? Yeah. It, it's. Uh, there, there was a great uh, episode of this uh, show that talks about gaming called Extra Credits, and they talked about this game uh, Vanquish a while back, uh, which is a, a fun game where you're like you're like in a hard suit, power armor, and you can like power slide for days and everything like that. But you have this gun that can just like transform into things, and it it kind of embodied that idea that you know. The gun is an extension of you. Your your weapon is an extension of you. It's not just a tool. Uh, so I think that's that's an aspect uh, that that comes into play. Um, where where like a, a drone, where it, it literally is like it has, uh, according to technology at this time in the distant future of 2019, <laughs> uh, you know, has no soul, so it it's yeah. not embodying anything in in a certain sense. Uh, though I I'd be really interested to see that kind of those philosophies clashing, um, or or or, or just being played with. Well, I guess that's what Pacific Rim Two is about, right? It's the pilots and the. Pacific Rim Max versus those drones. I think that's what the movie's all about, right? Pretty Kinda. much. Yeah. Where it's just, yeah. Well, right. were they drones or were they combined kaiju? Yeah, they, they, yeah. I guess they still had the little bit some, aspect. Some minor too. spoilers. They weren't just drones. Yeah. yeah right. <laughs> True. They were. They were controlled by the the one brain, weren't they? Well, yeah. Yeah, that, there was, yeah. There was a brain bug scenario going on. I guess so. Yeah. So it's still there's still <laughs> a, you like to know something more? controlling it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. But uh, well, I, you just I, need uh, intelligence like in your idea. robots. That's all. They won't become drones. I guess become transformers. That's what they are. They're just yeah. smart drones. Yeah, there we go. Like so you say, you need a personality. <laughs> yeah, but oh, yeah. or you get Ultron. <laughs> yeah, but Ultron once again had a personality. You'd like him or yeah. be a good guy or bad guy. He's still a. Mm. You, if he was just a mindless robot, I think it would have been a lot less interesting. Whereas yes. I think as Ultron, as much as people hate that movie, I think Ultron's amazing in that movie. He's such a cool character. It's, it's just the way he acts and his personality. So without that, it, it'd be like those drones at the beginning of that movie where it's just like, but that's okay. that's how he was. That's how he was in the comic book. Yeah. Yeah. That's why I like him a lot. That's why I thought he was really good in that. James Spader was great. I like James Spader though. Yes. Yeah. So there you go. So yeah. so instead of uh, solving the issue, Pat, we actually created a new one because now we have uh, one pilot, multi pilots, or no pilots. So <laughs> exactly, or pilots and drones, or yeah. Well, like, it wasn't even really like we were trying to solve a problem. I just was curious how everyone felt about. Yeah, I still no. I still like the uh, single mess. gunslinger versus single gunslinger. It's like a yeah, I, I'm that duels. Way too. Yeah, I like I like the like, team effort. Yeah, yeah, look yeah, at you, like, Brian. You're a I team like, player. <laughs> well, yeah. I like Pacific Rim. I just didn't understand the whole. Oh, I think Brian was right, though. You needed, you needed someone else there to play off of so they could discover stuff and they could it 
add mm-hmm. a little n- another layer. Otherwise, yeah. yeah, it'd just be guys dueling it out. It'd be robot jocks. They turned robot jocks into something a little bit more, <laughs> spoke a little bit more about the human condition by making it multiple pilots. Sure. Yeah. All right. That extra <laughs> layer. And now I'm thinking of uh, in in the Evangelion series. Mm. Uh, there, there, there's a, a part in there where uh, they have like, uh, like an artificial bot uh, component takes over the the suit while the the pilot's still stuck inside it. Yeah, that's I always guess, fun. <laughs> if I, uh, the the one thing I want to add too is if I guess for those of you that are listening that are kind of on the multi-pilot uh, bandwagon, I feel like you should watch Darling in the Frongs first and then <laughs> research the situation. See, 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 you <laughs> yeah, the same. yeah, do that and and Aquarion and then come back and, and let and me then, know. And then you'll be yeah, back so, on our, our uh, bandwagon. You'll, you'll be back on the solo team pretty quick. <laughs> yeah. Oh, man. Cool. Good shows. Man, right. he, even even the, the Mech in Korra was multi-pilot. Yeah, that's right. But it was more steampunky. It was much more. Uh, yeah. It wasn't as uh, advanced. There was no uh, connecting. Well, I guess they had some air bend, air bending involved, right? Too. Yeah, they had th- she controlled them uh, with like metal, li- like liquid metal that they had. Yeah, that's right. Uh, and she would just like wave her hand, and they would all spin. Is pretty cool. Metal bending. That shows amazing. That's right. Yeah. Oh yeah, the whole series. <laughs> I wish they had done more, but. Uh... Avatar: The Last Airbender and Korra was their great, great American anime. Mm-hmm. Yes. Well, All right. I think uh, we've beat this horse to the ground, this mech into the ground. <laughs> with uh-huh. two pilots, just <laughs> two pilots with single pilots, two pilots, and this mech has fallen this... apart because it was all combined and no longer can stay in one piece. Exactly. So, mm-hmm. let's move on to the Exil then. Let's exfil out of here. Alright, exfil. So we've wrapped up episode 7. We've determined that uh, we are split on how you should be piling a mech. <laughs> well, both like personally and as teams, as, as groups of us, as exactly. a, a team that has both our radio. <laughs> it's like, ah, oh, we can both enjoy Yeah. <laughs> with three individual mechs is how mobile our brand new is. That's right. That combined into one. We are actually that uh, third Ooh, yeah, Ultron be, movie. We our, should be a, we should be a combiner mech. Yeah. All right. So that's what we got to make for for Adepticon, right? It's like who one of us makes the legs, one of us makes the torso, <laughs> well, one of us makes the head. It, you know, I actually had the toys for the the middle uh, the three robot, and basically they made one giant robot with six arms. That sounds awesome. Oh, yeah, that's cool. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, there's that. <laughs> <laughs> All right, oh, so uh, I hope everyone had a good Christmas and a happy new year. I think, yes. Rob, you're up next for the next uh, episode. Yep. Yeah. Uh, do you want to know now what uh, we're going to do, or should I save it? Do you have it ready? Yeah, I, th- I think I know what we're going to do. All right, tell us now. Uh, I think we're going to do talk about uh, grades for Gundams. Gundam grades. What's your favorite? What What do you think about the higher grades or lower grades? And uh, what you? How much you love SD? <laughs> SD <laughs> and balls and bears. Well I, well, I guess I'm I'm going to be the only one talking in that section. <laughs> <laughs> no, but uh, yeah, uh, different uh, grades for the model kits because it's. I think that'll be interesting because. Yeah, we have a lot to talk about. I know, I know Pat and I are on two different levels here. <laughs> That's true. Cool. cool. All right, sounds good. Yeah, so, that should be fun. Well, guys, I want to say thanks for everyone for listening. Uh, episode 7 is up and done, and we are ready to get out of here. So uh, for Mobile Arm Radio, I'm Chopper. I'm Brian. And I'm Rob. See you next time. Go to Facebook group or uh, what is oh, it? Yeah. Pro- you gotta plug our shows. Mobile, uh, mobile Armor Radio on the Facebook pages. Yep. Uh, tweet Mobile Armor Radio at Mobile Armor Radio. Uh, it's something like that. Mobile Armor Radio, I think it is. <laughs> if you just type in Mobile Armor Radio <laughs> on Twitter, it'll find it. 
Because it, yeah, uh, I think it's M Armor Radio. Mobile mm-hmm. Armor Radio podcast at Podbean. Yeah. Yep. And uh, yeah, come to Adepticon, play some games with us. Yeah. Come yes. By. That'll, that'll be coming up very soon in the distant future of 2019. Yep. A couple months from then, from now. So, yeah, that's about it. All right. Anything else? Yeah. Well, let's get out. Bye, more we mechs. Made it. Everyone, <laughs> say goodbye. Bye-bye. Bye bye. <laughs> Happy New Year. Happy New Year. Oh, yeah. Happy Happy New Year. Year. <laughs> this has been Mobile Armor Radio. Join our Facebook group by searching for Mobile Armor Radio. Find us on Twitter at M Armor Radio. Find us on iTunes and visit our website, mobilearmorradio.podbean.com. Join us on the first of every month for more mecha discussion.